Do you have any notebook that I turned in notes? Uh, Chris has it, uh, Nate has it. Nate? Yeah. Is it not up there? No, it's not. It looks like it's right there on for you too. Okay, I'd like to get started, please. Hello? Can I get started, please? Okay, uh, this is Rollers Theorem. Can you guys see this or do you want me to zoom in on this thingy? It's going to look pretty ugly, I'll tell you that. Can you see this better? Oh, Laura. Oh. Yes. Uh, is this okay? Can you guys see this all right? Um, okay, so spend a couple of minutes getting this down. And then I'll review this with you, okay? So please notice that, see, I cut. That's the problem with this down thing, that if I go into, uh, into Zoom, I, I don't have my taskbar here anymore. Where did the magnifying glass go? Hello, someone help me? Huh? I don't have no escape here. Escape's out. Uh, no, it is out here somewhere. I can't see where it is. Huh, what? Oh, oh, that uh, the keyboard came up. Where did it go? Right there. Oh, no. Don't have for. Uh, uh, where? Oh, there. <laughs> But now this guy's uh, okay. So this is a picture by Roller's theorem. Okay. So this point here is x equals c, right? And it's telling you that the derivative at that point is equal to zero. F prime of c is equal to zero. And then you guys can see these two points. So this point here is a comma f of a. And the other point is b comma f of b. All right? Can everybody see that okay now? Do you guys get this down? Yeah. Okay. So what Rolla is saying, yeah, all that Rolla, Rolla was actually a French guy, okay, uh, around the uh, 1700s. So all he's saying is that a couple of things, okay. One, if function is continuous, Two, if function is differentiable. Three, if fa is equal to fb. Okay? I can't zoom in anymore because we just ran through this and I'm saying I'm having issues with zooming. Okay? fa is equal to fb. Then, Role is saying there's one number c between a and b such that the derivative is zero. In other words, such that the tangent line is horizontal. Okay? Such that the tangent line is horizontal. And, and the picture kind of shows that to you. It's fairly obvious in the picture. Can you guys see that? Then C bracket A comma B f prime of c is equal to zero. So there's some number c between a and b such that the tangent line is going to be horizontal to the graph. Okay? And the picture kind of makes it pretty obvious. Okay, you've got a function here. You've got a function here. You've got that the two endpoints have the same value, same y value. Then guaranteed that there's going to be a tangent line somewhere where it's going to be horizontal. Okay, it's pretty obvious from a picture. But try thinking about this 300 years ago when there was no Google, there was no iPhone, there was no electricity, it was just you and the cow. I mean, I mean literally the cow, okay? Literally. I mean, this guy was, uh, I, think it was I, I think he was a lawyer, so it wasn't a cow. I, mean, I don't know what, I think Michelle, yeah, I think he was a lawyer.
Wow, it's interesting. You should read his little blurb on page 172. Yeah, he wasn't very proud of calculus. Well, sometimes, you know, these big guys are never proud of things that are done by other people. So if someone else invented the stuff, he wasn't too happy. It's called competition. And you guys at Mission know all about that. Okay, picture, words and math. Words and math. So let's do an example now. And this one clearly says, I do. And I will do it because I love to do it. I'm trying to get you guys infected about loving to do math. I haven't quite made it yet. <clears throat> How's that? Okay. So, someone, uh, yeah, someone help me find the intercepts. What should I do? Sorry? Factor, do it. Well, find x intercepts. Janice. Thank you. So, x equals. One or two, okay? <laughs> because A is going to be smaller than B, okay? So I'm looking at left and right boundary, okay? Now, first of all, is F continuous? Yes. Why? Uh, can you be a little bit more specific and more general rather than specific but more general? Yes, because it is. So here's a function. Is that continuous? No. no. Thank you. Sorry, what was that? Thank you. Because it's a polynomial. Two. Is F differentiable? Nice. Why? Stephanie? No, that's not true. Uh, of course, it is a polynomial as well. Okay, it's a polynomial as well. Three. So in this example, what is A equal to? One and B, two. So is F1 equal to F2? Yes. Equal to what? Zero. And they're both equal to zero? Huh? No, no. Whoa. F1 equals F2. It's not. Hang on. If you have a question, raise your hand because there are five people asking questions at the same time. Monica, it's F1. It's not F prime 1. Okay? And you guys already solved it for the intercept. So you know that the function is going to be zero at that place. You guys with me on this? Okay. No, did I hear say someone say no? I don't get what's going on. What? Why does it how does F how does one and two equal each other? F of one and F of two. Yeah. Okay. I mean the, can't you see the F there? Alright? Okay. So is Rolly satisfied? Yes. Rolly is satisfied. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do an f prime. So what's f prime of x equal to? 2x. What? Minus 3. You're going to set it equal to 0. And so x is equal to 3 over 2. Is that between 1 and 2? Yes. yes. That's exactly what Rolly tells you. That there will be one number, at least one number. Okay, at least one number between 1 and 2 such that the derivative at that point is zero, okay? Doesn't have to be exactly between one and two, okay? Right, doesn't, doesn't have to be halfway between. This example, it happens to be, but doesn't have to be halfway in between. Sorry? No, no, that's the interval. Remember, if you go back to the theorem, remember the theorem? 
right there, you've got brackets there. Okay? And then C has got to be between the open interval. In other words, it cannot happen at the end points. Okay? okay? So the fact that it is... Sorry? Yes. Okay? It can never happen at the end points. Okay? It can never happen at the end points. Okay, everybody got this example down? All right. Okay, uh, the next theorem that we're going to do, the mean value theorem, that's where the application comes in. So remember what role is theorem, okay? If you look at the picture, the picture is saying that if these two endpoints are equal, and then if you want to join this line, if you want to join this line, then there's at least one point where the tangent line is going to be parallel to this. And because this is horizontal, because these two are equal, this is horizontal, so its derivative is zero. Okay. The next theorem we're going to say, hey, this, these two points don't have to be equal; they could be at a slant. Okay, so that's where this theorem is going to come into play. So, to prove the next theorem, you need these guys. This guy's going to solve it, but we don't do proofs. Okay. All right. Um, you guys do this example. Of course. Any more complaints there? No. Like I'm just going to sit here and laugh at you. Any more complaints? Come on. Keep it coming, man. No problem. What's all that about? Oh, Henry. Yeah, I love you, Henry. I love you. Can you guys get it down so we can kind of talk about it? I'll probably have to write on this because you might not be able to see this. Okay. So this thing here is f prime of c equals fb minus fa over b minus a. All right, so what's the name of this line? What's that line called? Tangent. Nice, good job. What's this line called? Yes, we spent three days in the lab talking about tangents and secants. Okay. So the mean value theorem is telling you is that one function is continuous. Two, function is differentiable. Okay, so in this case, there are only two conditions. We don't need the third one where the endpoints are equal. And you can see that the endpoints are not equal. FA is not equal to FB. Okay. <clears throat> then the mean value theorem tells you that the tangent line, there's at least one place on the graph where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. So this line here. Okay, is parallel to this line here. Which in some ways is the same thing as Rolle's theorem, right? Because if you really look at Rolle's theorem, it's telling you that if you've got this situation here, okay, then there's at least one number where that line is going to be horizontal. Well, if FA is equal to FB, then the secant's got to be horizontal, the tangent's got to be horizontal because the tangent is parallel to the secant. So you can see the direct connection between Rolle and, and mean value theorem. Okay. So since these two lines are parallel, it means that the slope of the tangent lines go to be equal to the slope of the secant. You guys with me on that? Laura, come back here. You guys okay on that? I'll say it again. Slope of the tangent is going to be the slope of the secant because that lines are parallel. Here's the slope of the tangent, f prime. That's the slope of the tangent. Benjamin, come back. Okay? That's the slope of the tangent. Right? F prime is the, is the slope of the tangent line. And here is the slope of the secant. Does everybody see that? Does anybody need me to work that out? It's the 